different things could you think of doing with a book? That's a creative exercise that I've been involved in for the past few years, thinking divergently of the many ways of seeing and knowing a book. I'm a book artist and I create book sculptures. So I find old abandoned books and I reimagine them in a new form. I enjoy working with common objects and making them behave in unexpected ways, ways that challenge your conventional perception of that object. So when a book becomes a book sculpture, the text block occupies a completely different form and it becomes a complex three-dimensional space. The text melts away into a texture. I delight in scrambling the arrangement and making something as familiar as a book behave like an object of intrigue, something that elicits a feeling of surprise and wonder. So constructing a book sculpture is actually a logical exercise. Each page is very carefully folded with mathematical precision I use just my hands, no folding instruments, no scissors, no glue. And with this minimal intervention of just folding the pages, an old book is reborn in a new avatar. And here are some more divergent thoughts. This is a precisely folded book which has been hammered with a meat tenderizer in my kitchen. Since I work from home, the kitchen is the closest thing that I have to an experimental lab. And this is a molded book which has been dunked in water and the pages have been shaped while it's still wet, also in my kitchen slash lab. These are six folded paperbacks which have been assembled as a wall sculpture and the title of this piece is As Hungry as the Tide. And that's because four of these paperbacks had that very same title. These extra large, colorful sculptures are made out of abandoned coffee table books. So each year, thousands of old books are discarded, either because their owner tires of it or because the subject matter has become outdated. And the way we consume our data in this modern digital age has changed enormously. And that has led to several more books being made redundant. I like to rescue these old books from oblivion and find a new way to honor them in our lives. I explore their visual, tactile, and physical qualities, give them new personalities, and help them find a new home where they will be loved again. So while I'm making these physical changes on the books with my hands, I was also finding ways of seeing them differently through the lens of a camera. And these photographs are called Unreal Portraits of Books. Isn't it paradoxical that even though you've been brought so much closer to the subject, you've actually been even far further removed from its actual identity? The photographs seem to have created a new layer of abstraction and often the only element to tell you what it was that you were looking at was the fragments of text on the page. And then one day I saw one of my folded books lying on my glass dining table and the sunlight came in and caused this perfect reflection in the glass. A surprising change occurred when I rotated the this image by 90 degrees. And I wonder what you see. Most people seem to see a tree or a flower, somebody even said peacock. And I realized that it was the reflection that had caused this perfect symmetry and that the symmetry had altered my book form into something that resembled a life form from nature. And that was the start of a whole new series of photographs, which I call the Biblioflora photographs. And each of these is a folded book 
photographed on a reflective surface, and they all seem to strongly evoke nature. Flowers or seeds or shells, maybe even an insect. So I puzzled over how it could be possible that something like a book could so strongly mirror nature. And I found that the common factor was incredibly mathematics. I read about the theory of morphogenesis, and very simply put, it says that every organism or shape in nature can be expressed as a mathematical equation. And this led me to wonder, could it at all be possible that the simple mathematics that I use to shape my books somehow parallel those in nature? And so ideas and thoughts swirled around in my head and I put them together in this artist's accordion book. I scribbled down my thoughts and I used my biblioflora specimens to look like natural specimens. And this book is just a whimsical exploration of the interrelatedness between the book forms that I make and the life forms that nature makes. So it's a way to stretch your perception of books through ideas and thinking. And the most recent divergent thought I've had is this. It's an experiment in stop motion animation where I've taken literally hundreds of photographs of my folded books and played them together in a sequence to give you the illusion of movement. So take a look. That's how far I've come in answer to the question, how many different things can you do with a book? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>